Well, this was a lot of fun to do. You know, I have so much fun playing with this rhythm section, and even though we recorded the backing tracks ahead of when I'm actually recording the uh, the, the soloing that I'm doing, the lead playing, um, it's really fun to remember how much fun it was in the studio together and to listen to all the cool stuff that, they, that the bass player and drummer were doing. So anyway, uh, so over this piece, uh, I'm playing a lot of blues lines and some mixolydians, uh, some mixolydian lines. For example, um, over the G7, and I use a little bit of, of both. Over the one chord in a blues, you can use both a blues scale and a mixolydian scale, something like this. So there I started with blues scale, but then I resolve out to the, so I've got a B flat, the sharp nine, but then I resolve out to the natural third, which is in the mixolydian scale. It's also in the arpeggio. So what's really cool about, uh, about the blues is when you go from the one to the four chord, if you're playing, say, a G minor blues or a G minor pentatonic over the G7, a lot of times, like I said, I, I resolve the phrase out to the B natural. But even if you don't, when you go to the four chord, when I hit that C, you can use that same G minor uh, pentatonic because that ties in with the harmony of the C7 chord. So, so if I play... This is why, you know, you might hear some players, and I do it a number of times, hold one riff over just, um, over both chords. So I might be going from the G to the, to the C7 uh, or C9 chord, and I might play the same riff. The same kind of blues lick, because although the, um, the, the different notes affect each chord differently, it works over both chords, for example, the G. Let's take the G and B flat, those common notes for a blues phrase. So the G is obviously the root of a G7 chord, and the B flat is that very colorful sharp nine. But if I take those same two notes, if I take the G and the B flat and I play it over the C7 chord, now the G is the five of a C, of the C7 chord, and the B flat major attitude, that's the flat seven. Okay, so that, that's why that, that you can stay in that same scale over both of those chords, over the one and the four, and it sounds so good. Uh, but again, what I do, what most jazz players do, and this is sort of separates out uh, some jazz players from some blues players, is that I will resolve that G7 sound. And a number of times I do stuff like... So I'm playing the flat third but then resolve out to the major third, uh, which just is a nice way of sort of coming home and anchoring yourself in that sound. Uh, so I got a lot of blues phrases, and but again, the difference, you'll notice me targeting that major third. And sometimes I slide and do that nice legato uh, phrasing that I've talked to you guys about in different segments. So I'm targeting both of those notes, the flat third or sharp nine and the major third. And that's a, just a really cool sound to have. Um, another thing that I do that I think is really, uh, really quite cool is um, I am doing uh, some octaves, but still keeping that bluesy phrasing. <laughs> And for the octaves, I was mostly using a mixolydian scale, but some passing tones. There's a passing tone. Now, when we come to the D7 sharp nine and the E flat seven sharp nine, what I'm doing is I'm just playing over it as if it was a Dorian, basically D Dorian to E flat Dorian. And the reason is, is that when you have a sharp nine chord, it's essentially a polyharmonic chord, meaning that it's got several harmonies that are superimposed on top of it, or that you can superimpose on top of it. So what does that mean in a playing situation? Well, I've got the sharp nine. So I could play. I really could play the D7 mixolydian, or I can play a D Dorian as if it's a minor. And 
since it is a sharp nine chord and that note is the same chord that would be in a minor chord uh, I'm choosing the Dorian and because it's on top of the chord so I use a D Dorian sound D Dorian is just a fancy way of saying C major except you're starting from the D so instead of playing you're playing it's the same scale though so if you know your C major scales up and down the neck you know your D Dorian it's the same scale Okay, so, so a number of times I do, um, when, whenever I play over the D7 sharp nine, it's very simple, I just move it up a half step for the E flat seven sharp nine. So if I do, I might, you know, so it's, it's very simple and in that way the guitar, uh, one of the things that's um, very guitaristic and friendly to us as guitar players is that you're basically just using a slide rule so you can move it up and whatever down, whatever phrase you're playing. I like to change the phrase that I'm doing slightly sometimes over, the, over that uh, when I go up a half step to the E flat seven sharp nine, but essentially just moving up and down in half steps. So, uh, so those are some of the things that, uh, that uh, you need to be aware of and some of the things that I do in the solo. And um, take your time working through some of these ideas. Take a little snippet at a time. There's a lot of fun stuff in here. And, and again, this is a real important tune to, to know. So have fun, dig in.